let's get things started with today's funding 101 session. Um, I'm thrilled to introduce Gabrielle Rubain. She's the MMF Canada Outreach and Development Director, um, but she's not only that, she's got experience as a performing artist, a manager, show curator, she's worked at Factor, she has her own company specializing in marketing and event production. This woman does it all when she's not busy with all of that. She's raising two children and uh, her company is also founded and continues to run International Women's Day Summit that's held annually uh, in Toronto. So rather than continuing to read through her glorious bio, I'm going to pass it on to her so we can dig right into uh, Funding 101. Gabrielle, thanks so much and take it away. Okay. Uh, hey, everybody. Thanks for uh, coming out and joining me. Thanks for the awesome introduction, Amy. Um, so right now, um, I'm just going to talk about the broad spectrum of funding and the, what I seem to see as the one-on-one um, basics around that. Um, as we all know, factor deadlines are coming up, so we're definitely going to be discussing, um, you know, uh, what I think are some tips and tricks um, into making a good factor profile. And then I'm also going to give you guys some information about how important it is to understand how your Nielsen sound scan um, data plays into um, being able to uh, qualify for some of these grants that are floating around. Um, okay, so <clears throat> we're just going to get right into it. So. The first thing that I think is really important is understanding eligibility. Um, it's really important that you understand um, the different criteria for each person that is part of the music industry. So when I say that, I mean, are you applying as a artist? capacity or are you applying as a manager or in a company capacity? Um, now, when we're talking about self-managed artists, this is really a really cool area because you can then um, access either streams of funding. Um, a lot of times you, you can't access both at the same time, um, but sometimes you can depending on how your company is set up. Um, it's also very important to note um, for artist managers or managers that, um, well, no, sorry, more for artists, self-managed artists, that you um, recognize how important it is to still have your company set up as a viable business. And understanding the workings behind how a business actually works, because that way it enables you to strategically plan your, uh, how you're going to um, get funding, your funding strategy. So really important that you have a funding strategy and eligibility falls into setting that strategy. Um, what kind of information is used for your application? So basically when I'm talking about <clears throat> you know, uh, eligibility, there's a few things that are really important. So, I mean, who is the applicant sometimes also depicts the type of information that you may have to submit. For example, um, for manager, like I said, you may have to have your company registered as a sole proprietor or incorporated versus a self-managed artist who may only need to provide a qualified demo that meets Maple. Uh, Maple standards. So what's Maple? Maple um, is basically, it's a point system for calc uh, calculating the Canadian, um, uh, sorry, Canadian contact. Sorry, let me rephrase that. It's a point system for calculating the Canadian content of a single track or album. So it stands for music, artists, performance production, lyrics. And to qualify for that, for factor funding, you have to qualify under Maple. Um, one of the important things to also take note is, are your goals realistic compared to the scope of your proposed project? And is the amount that you're asking for reflective 
of that scope and of that project. Um, because with Factor, two of their programs is jury sound recording and arts development, and they're juried um, programs. So when you're presenting your application to um, a, a juror, one, if you don't meet all the eligible criteria, you won't even make it through to the jury process. So it's really important to keep an eye on that. And it's really important to be able to communicate to other business professionals in the music industry that you understand that you cannot ask for, you can, if you have $2,000, you can't do a whole tour on $2,000. It's, that's unrealistic. So, uh, or an international tour on $2,000. I mean, maybe if you have a good accountant, you can, but in hindsight, it's not really realistic. So you have to make sure that the scope of your project matches the amount that you're asking for so that when another professional looks at that, they see, okay, this makes sense. It's reasonable. You can have tangible results because this makes sense. Um, so... <clears throat> Then now I'm going to get into your creative vision and why that's so important. Um, creative or creative vision versus business plan. So some organizations, uh, organizations like Factor, they want you to show, you know, how will you use the the grant to attain professional growth and visible, measurable results. Yes, you need to have your creative vision. Um, a solid creative vision, but your business plan and your business acumen that you communicate needs to answer those questions for the person who is on the other side um, and is a project, uh, whether it's a project coordinator, because some grants have different criteria, are, are not all juried um, grants, but sometimes they are. And the person on the other side, you have to always remember, is another professional or your peer who understands, you know, simple business concepts um, and understands the basics of a business plan. So definitely for those, I know the JSR and the AD is coming up, it's really important that you put your business cap on when you are writing those factor grants. Now, on the other side, you have organizations like, um, oh, sorry, so one of those things as, as we have here is, um, this includes who's, who's on your team, who have you reached out to, who may not be on your team now, but is of that professional standard, who can help you reach those measurable um, goals that you have in your application. So it's okay even if you, that person isn't on your team right away, but the point of it is, is that if you're asking for this financial support, who are you going to put on your team to help you get to those goals? And if you have somebody on your team already who's helping you get to those goals, it's important to highlight slightly, you know, their um, accomplishments so that the person on the other side can see, hey, you know, this person has credited people on their team, or they have a vision of who they want to work with and know how they can reach their goals. Really super important. Um, now, when it comes to a creative vision, that's a little bit different because if you have organizations like Ontario Arts Council, um, it, they say it right in the, the name, arts, right? <laughs> so they are more focused on um, art, your creative vision, and how you can use the funding to execute a solid creative vision. Um, that is the other side of filling out a grant. And it's really important to understand the difference between these two, because that will help you, again, um, make a really good uh, funding strategy, annual funding strategy, or five-year funding strategy for yourself, um, and tackle two avenues. One, which will really help you grow in your creative vision and art form. And on the other side, uh, factor is mainly 
more about supporting new musical works and creative re and recordings. Um, whereas Ontario Arts Council, and a lot of business falls behind besides that, where Ontario Arts Council is more about bringing the art vision to life, along with, you know, um, having a recording uh, produced. So anyways, I'm going to move on to some pro tips, which um, the era that we're in right now of inclusion and diversity has really been uh, incorporated into a lot of funding organizations. Um, and in that aspect, I mean, it's really important to identify with yourself and what your propose, what your demographic is. Um, <clears throat> how do you identify with yourself? Because there are grants, new grants coming up right now that are specifically, let's say, for Black, Indigenous, people of color. Um, and a lot of times there are, these options are set in your profile. And it's not actually part of the um, grant itself. Sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't, but it's really important um, to keep an eye on these new grants that are coming, that are popping up, especially within already established funding organizations. Um, <clears throat> if you're an artist manager, this is a really um, important place for you to keep an eye on to be able to support, um, you know, artists who are either working in underserved genres or who are from a marginalized community. One other thing is very, very important, which comes back to the profile. I know for Factor, you have to have uh, submitted a profile, whether it's an artist profile or a music company profile. This um, part is basically where you have to start. It's very important. Um, and there is a validation process. Sometimes that validation process can be tricky and you need to give yourself enough time uh, when applying for grants to understand who you're applying as and make sure that you have a updated artist or applicant profile, management company profile. A lot of the different organizations classify these uh, applicant profiles as different things. So it's important to know which grants require that um, because without that, you could be filling out a grant and not even be recognized because you don't have an artist profile. Another thing is with Factor, I know they used to do this, I'm not sure if they still do, but without an artist profile for some of the applications, you don't even get into the portal. So, it really um, having the right applicant profile is a really important step going forward and understanding what all the different classifications mean because this opens you up and it opens your understanding up of what grants you can actually qualify and apply for. So I hope everybody is good and getting through understanding what I'm saying. Um, we're going to have a moment for questions at the end, um, so I'm just going to keep it moving. Okay, just bear with me one second. This is actually the first webinar I've done like this, so um, I'm really excited and I see there's quite a few people there, so thank you. I hope you get something out of this. So I'm going to go on to the next slide. Um, so basically, let's just, just kind of, um, we're using Factor as an example because a lot of organizations work in the same way. There's sound recording grants, travel grants, and development grants. Um, one really important area to understand here, which um, is the same for most funding organizations, is understanding that artists may apply on their own behalf if they retain the exploitation rights to the sound recording. So um, if you are a record, if a record label now controls the exploitation rights to the sound recording, the label must apply. 
artist applicants must have an approved applicant uh, profile, including record labels as well. So some of the categories uh, for these uh, different um, programs with Factor particularly fall into four categories, which is artists applying on their own behalf, companies and organizations applying to uh, the collective uh, initiatives program, songwriters applying on their own behalf, and music companies whose primary business activities are those of uh, artist manager, distributor, publisher, or record label. Um, I wanted to let you guys know also that we are going to be emailing out um, a list of uh, links that are going to be pertaining to everything that we're talking about here in terms of, you know, just information wise and also some of the actual programs. So with the sound recording, um, the jury sound recording grant, so some of the usual, uh, some of the things you have to submit with your um, application are goals and expected results, detailed information for each track you intend to record, the lyrics, two MP3 assessment tracks, um, and possibly a description of the changes that you intend to make on these uh, assessment tracks, and a very detailed marketing plan. Again, this brings back to having the understanding of what are you communicating? What is this particular organization looking from you, looking for from you, what information. This organization factor, you have to put your business cap on for sure. They are more about, you know, how are you going to reach these goals through your marketing plan and less about, you know, the creative aspect of it. Um, Okay, let's see the time. So we got half an hour left. So people who are eligible for this is general artist, record label two, artist two, um, and record label approved. So that's why it's really important. I know for some managers, they also have a record label and understanding the difference between um, artist profiles, music company profiles, such as management, or record labels is really important, especially when you have more than one service that your management company um, offers. There's also now a program that I really like from Factors called Marketing and Promotion for Non-Factor Funded Sound Recordings. This is a great program um, because you don't have to have had a sound recording that was funded by Factor to apply. And it gives you a leg up with your marketing. The only key with this is that you do have to fall under um, funding thresholds. And so that basically means, you know, <clears throat> understanding where your music is registered so that your music is counted in, um, in organizations like Nielsen SoundScan. Um, without understanding how Nielsen SoundScan and registered music uh, operates, it's not only always just with SoCan where you have to register your music. So in order to qualify for this program, you have to meet a, fund, uh, a, a threshold of streams, downloads, and album sales. Um, and later on in the document that we send around, I'll, you will see there's a more, uh, more, um, break, uh, more definitive breakdown of how that really works. But <clears throat> now with this, or, uh, this program, general artists are, rec are, are eligible. Record label twos, record, uh, just approved record labels or approved artists. So you don't have to have, you know, artist two or artist three or record label two to be approved for this program. You do have to meet um, the sales and uh, download thresholds. <clears throat> Excuse me one second. <laughs> Okay, so 
<clears throat> so the next grant that we're going to talk about or type of grant is travel grants. Um, <clears throat> So basically, most travel grants with Factor can be accessed through live performance. Right now, a lot of organizations are not doing travel grants because obviously of COVID, but it's definitely something that you, you can put into your um, funding strategy. And it's a great place to start looking at and be prepared for when uh, you know, a lot of the restrictions have lifted. And so getting your leg up and understanding how funding grants work, they can be accessed, I believe, through SOCAN as well. Um, and a lot of various um, funding organizations offer them. They offer them in two capacities. Excuse me. One capacity is for specifically for artists to attend showcases. And the other capacity is for managers to be able to travel to showcases, conferences, and whatnot, um, with the belief that they are, and the understanding that they are going there specifically to conduct business. So that a lot of times in these travel grants, you may already have to have had, um, as a manager capacity, you already have to have meetings set up with industry delegates uh, who could uh, help you further your artist's career. Um, there is also a list of showcases um, on Factors, uh, qualified showcases on Factors website that um, for artists, if you are, um, if you apply to a showcase, let's say Breakout West, um, and you're accepted, then you can apply for a Factor grant to apply to that showcase. Now, I'm not sure if they're, I'm assuming that they are, but I'm not sure if they're on specifically Factor's list, but they are, you know, it's Breakout West. Everybody knows about Breakout West. So if you're um, asked to come perform at one of these showcases, then there's money there. There's funding there for you to get to that showcase. Um, and now that's international. It's not just within Canada. It's, um, you know, if there's a showcase that you've been, um, invited to i know there's a annual reggae conference in jamaica if there's a you know if you're invited to that i've seen artists get invited to that and get funding to go to that showcase um so that's a area where i think a lot of people aren't really focused at and i think that for um all the attendees it's a great place for you guys to look at, understand, and get your foot in the door before a lot of people, um, before the regulations are um, lifted and then all of the portals start flooding and hubbing and, and it gives you time to do your research. And that's really, really important. Um, so now I'm gonna get into development grants. So with Factor, one of them is um, comprehensive music companies. And this is a little bit more higher level. Um, <clears throat> you have to have uh, an incorporated company. You have to have um, your accounting, uh, your annual accounting in check. So, you know, keep, keep your accounting updated. Understand how important it is to um, organize your finances, have your fine have a record of your finances um, it really comes into play now I think the there's a quite high threshold so I think it's about a hundred thousand annually but don't quote me on that but there's a lot of other um, funding streams and programs that have development grants so we'll take a look at them a few of them as we get going through some of them uh, the other slides but <clears throat> It's very important as a manager to keep your eye on these development grants and start sourcing the ones that you can apply for now or as a functioning business, you can, um, you can try to apply for later. And that's where we start talking about, you know, what's your strategic plan? What is your funding strategy. Um, and I think every good business person should have one. So development grants are not always attainable at the moment, but they are definitely something that in the future can be attainable to and almost work as a guide sometimes when you're reading through the 
um, program requirements, it's almost a guide for a lot of people who are entrepreneurs of what's the next step, what should I be looking for, what, where should I, you know, how am I going to run this company and, and whatnot. So I definitely say it's worth looking at development grants, even if you're like, man, I don't qualify, I don't bring in a hundred grand a year. You never know, you may one day. Um, and we all know in this business, like you have to have a positive perspective. And if you attain, uh, if you uh, set your goals high, then there are funding stream, uh, there are funding thresholds that ask for a lower um, annual revenue. So you never know, maybe a hundred thousand might seem a far away, but if you are looking at it long-term, maybe you reach 20,000 annually, and then you reach 50,000 annually. Um, and I really believe that educating yourself on the development grants as a management in management capacity is, is that's where it's at. So stay ahead of the game. Anyways, we're going to move along. Um, I'm just looking at, I think, some questions here. Okay. Um, so we're just, yeah, this slide's a little crazy, but some key points are, I think I might have already gone through some of these uh, things, but it's just, you know, recognizing what categories you fall under. <clears throat> Excuse me, when... Uh, looking to apply for funding. Sorry, I'm going to get a glass of water one second. <laughs> okay. Okay, sorry guys, just bear with me for a second. So these are some key factors, as I said, again, that are super important. Uh, Amy, I think maybe if we could just move to the next slide. Bear with me, guys. Thank you. Okay. So now I want to talk about, again, some following the same lines of, you know, recording grants, travel grants or life performance and development grants. I think that Canada Council for the Arts is an amazing organization. They are really um, changing. I just had this conversation with my colleague Amy about how they are changing and opening up criteria and requirements for accessing some of their funding streams and programs. and. One thing I really want to, um, uh, one of the things that I want to tap into is that they are a diverse funding organization. They now have a element in the art, in the profile section that when you set up your profile, where you can click whether you identify with in any of these areas, people of African, Asian, Latin American, Middle Eastern, and mixed racial heritage. Um, a key here is mixed racial heritage. I feel like that line is very inclusive of everyone. And it also brings back a bit of the cultural aspect to all of us in all of our different cultures. And so I think that this program is really great for is a, a space where especially people from marginalized communities should be tapping into and looking at um so two of the programs that i'm just going to quickly touch base on and i will again send the awesome links pdf which has so much information you're going to be like oh my god <laughs> um, but one of them is the supporting artist practice so it's a, a professional development grant for artists arts professionals, um, which is based around uh, mentorships, internships, specialized training, research, which is really key, part and participation in conferences. Um, check that program out. As I said, right now, there's a lot of uh, COVID restrictions, but you want to be 
um, ahead of the game when those restrictions are lifted. So I don't know if that particular program is active right now, but I believe it will be once the restrictions are lifted. Um, there's also concept to realization. So this is really great for management uh, companies who are looking to broaden their horizon and who are looking to um, educate themselves more. Um, there is a little bit more of upper level criteria. As you can see, you have to be managing um, three or more artists, uh, Canadian artists, um, and I believe you you may have to also submit uh, some financials. But I know there's a lot of people who are ready to do this. And so I really think that if you're ready, um, if you've started to get your financials in order and you've been listening to me all these years about financials, then you're ready for the Concepts to Realization program. So give it a, give it a check. Um, everybody's heard about SoCan Foundation. They're really great. Um, they have grants for creators, music publishers, and um, individuals working in management. Um, one of their grants that I really think is very interesting is Work Commissioning Assistant Grant. So if you are a management company, basically what that is for is if you are a management company and you are a SOCAN um, registrant, and there is an artist that you may want to work with that you've never that you, that you don't know personally that you're not representing but there is an artist that maybe you want to collabor collaborate with for your for another artist on your roster this grant is great for that because they will match up to i think three thousand um, dollars of a grant for you so that means basically if say you have a thousand dollars and you want to do a, co a collab this is for producers as well if you want to do a collab with another artist who happens to be registered with so can so you can apply for this grant and so can will match that thousand dollars and now you have two thousand dollars to um, try to commission this artist to work with you and your company. I think this is great. And I know that a lot of people are registered with SOCAN and I'm not too sure how many people actually know that this grant is out there. So give it a look. Um, there was a few other grants right now, if you're, especially for people who are, who are registered with SOCAN as an artist, um, I don't know if you know, but you should check. They do have COVID release, uh, relief. Um, so it's still on their website. It's still accessible. I would say if you are registered with SOCAN, um, it's, a, it's, it's basically, it's just relief um, and it can be applied for anything. Uh, the only thing I know that there was an art, they did make a statement a little while back saying that once the funds are gone, that's it. So if you haven't registered, for the COVID relief through um, SOCAN, I would definitely say go and do that. Um, another one we all know and love is Ontario Arts Council. Um, they have specifically the Music Recording Projects grant, <clears throat> excuse me, for self-managed artists, I think this is great um, because a lot of times a self-managed artist, you have a larger, I have noticed through my experience that artists, these artists have a larger scope uh, and business side and artistic side of where they want to be and are able to, um, you know, execute their project and use 10 or $15,000 and use it really highly to their benefit because they understand the business and the creative side and actually have to do it themselves. So I would definitely say if, if you haven't, check that out, especially if you are a self-managed artist, it's a really great one. Um, and one thing I wanted to point out, um, if you are going to um, do an Ontario Arts Council um, um, application or any arts applications, as opposed to factor, um, I would say it would be really good to look at some of the Polaris Prize uh, winners, especially the recent ones like Havaya Mighty and so on. And Havaya did get, I believe she did have a factor grant, but she also may have possibly had a Ontario Arts Council grant. Reason why I'm saying whether they did or they didn't, but what I'm saying is when it comes to writing an arts grant, if you look at Polaris Prize winners, 
they won those prizes for particular reasons. Falling around, a lot of it has to do with art. So it's, I'm just giving an example of a way to win with some of these uh, grants because those artists who have won the Players Prize, they have a solid, solid art-based uh, vision. And that's the kind of solid arts vision that you need to have when applying for um, Ontario Arts Council grants. All right, so we're gonna move it along. I think I'm just gonna take a second to read some of these questions. We are kind of coming to the end. Um, thank you. Okay. Yes, we can get into more factor in depth um, information at next week's um, webinar. So make sure that you guys tune into that right now. I am going to talk about um, how do top 40 BDS Spotify streams and downloads make an impact. Well, right here in front of you in this list here, Canada CHR top 40 um, list is a list of Toronto radio stations that um, are connected to the Nielsen sound scan. What happens is if your music is played on one of these stations and you make it in the top 40, you then qualify for some of uh, the programs that they can offer. So one of them is um, one that I've already mentioned, which is the marketing for non-factor funding funded recordings um and if you go on factors website and you do your due diligence of looking at all the amazing programs that they have but specifically you know some of the ones that you think you might not be able to get into this is really key because this is a threshold that can sometimes nix out you know how many spotify streams and downloads which is, I think, for either reggae or hip hop. Don't quote me on this. Please go to their site and we will give you the link to the specific information. But for artists or artist managers who have art in deal in genres of hip hop or reggae, the streaming threshold is, or I think it's album threshold is 1500. Now you do have to, there is a specific calculation that Factor uses to break down Spotify streams and downloads and how they all play into that. If you don't fall into that category though, looking at whether you are, if whether your radio, whether your music is played on some of these top 40 um, charts is a way to bypass the streams. So I, posted this here because it's so important and especially within marginalized communities we don't realize uh, that this is actually available to us um, so I'm putting it out there um, to yeah really big one so also factor does recognize um, community campus radio so I don't know if you guys have heard of earshot I don't know if it's here but earshot is a big one it's definitely recognized and they do have a top 40 and they also recognize some of these other um, college radio uh, um, stations as well. So um, yeah, I'm going to ready for the next slide. Oh, here we are. Questions. Woohoo. So I think, I'm just gonna take a minute to read. Oh, okay, let's tackle grant writing. Do we need to have, do you need to have a grant writer? No, you don't need to have a grant writer. If you think that your business skills are good enough, you understand, um, you, have, you understand the difference between writing a creative, vision grant versus a business plan orientated grant and you're comfortable in those areas, no, you don't need a grant writer. Um, a lot of Canadian artists have received grants without uh, a grant writer. Um, 
But a lot of times, sometimes people are too busy to write grants. Sometimes people are traveling and don't have access. I mean, not right now because of COVID, but sometimes if you're too busy to write a grant, too stressed to write a grant, and the deadline line is looming, uh, then that's where you do want to, you know, get, get a grant writer. Um, if writing is just not your thing, then yeah, you want to get a grant writer. It's important to have somebody though, who understands your vision. Don't just, you know, hire a grant writer. Um, and then they write some very basic grant based off of their own basic template that they have. And then you go and you submit it to somewhere like Factor and six or seven people have the same damn template as you. That's a no-no because <clears throat> that's not setting you aside. So you really wanna work with somebody who um, understands you, your music, your visions, your goals. And there's a lot of companies and professionals who they understand that and they take the time to understand you as an artist and then they write your grant for you. So if I would suggest, if you are looking for a grant writer, that's one of the key elements um, is whether they understand your, your, um, your vision and whether they have the business acumen to even write a grant in the first place, two key things. And that could be a friend or that could be an organization. It doesn't really matter. It matters most about their connection and understanding of what you want out of this and, you know, business acumen, but that's a no brainer. So, <laughs> um, let's see, that was another question. Grant writing. Okay. Okay, so I have a question here from Adele. Yes, your artist needs to be Canadian. You need to be Canadian. If it's a band, then 51% of the band has to be Canadian. Okay. Are there places where there are successful completed grants to review? Mm, that is a good question. Now, Factor's been really good with um, uploading new data. That's very helpful. It wasn't very helpful <laughs> a few years ago. It was, um, and they've done such a great job of updating data. I'm not sure there may be an, an example on there that's something I haven't seen. Um, but if you do look at their business policies um, section, there may be an example there. And in some in the links that we'll be sending out to you guys, there will definitely be um, a lot of awesome factor links there. Um, yes, that is very true. They do, you know, and this is a topic that a lot of people talk about, I think is mentorship. Um, I think it might be in terms of finding a completed grant, this is where you might want to look to mentorship. You may look, want to look to, um, you know, somebody who's more seasoned than you and ask them for their help, ask them, Hey, do you actually have one? Um, maybe something that's something that we can do, Amy, maybe is try to find out where we can source um, uh, a grant application that was successful and uh, get it out to you guys. Um, thanks everybody for your questions. Let's see. Oh, okay. Thanks, Amy. Um, so um, that's pretty much it. We're wrapping it up. This was just meant to be a basic um, 101 to get you excited about, you know, you can do this. Um, you can definitely do this and key areas to keep, um, to help you be successful. Um, definitely, I'm going to say this so many times that we really need to, you really need to look at where your music is registered. It doesn't need, it's not, 
it's not good enough just to be registered with SOCAN. It has to be registered in other areas so that you can get the maximum benefit out of some of these uh, funding organizations and you can bypass some of their requirements by getting yourself on the top 40 list. We are gonna be, I've found a top 40 list. Um, it's international and as long as you're on a top 40 list of any international radio station, then you can bypass a lot of these um, uh, requirements. And a lot of people are doing this and a, a lot of people in hip hop, reggae, um, R&B, they don't know about this one. So this is a secret gem. Make sure that you register your music where it needs to be registered. Nielsen Sound Scan, I think it's like 15 bucks to register a song. So please go and do that. Thanks so much for joining in and yeah.